Hey guys, um, I started keeping track of a big massive list of the things that actually make money for the marketer. What are some of those skill sets again that we're taught to just go do? What, is, what are some of the skill sets you guys are out doing right now or think that you need to learn? Copywriting. 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 Funnels, publishing. Traffic, Traffic. speaking. Logo, sales. Logos, slogan, sales. <laughs> Door's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, hey, uh, so what I started doing though is keeping a big list of those things. And what my team and I have been doing is going through each one of them and asking ourselves, is that actually marketing? And that's been a hard conversation for many of the things on the list. And tomorrow I'm going to go through and share with you guys some of the habits that rich marketers have done for hundreds of years. I'm very excited about that. A lot of research went into that, that presentation. But what I wanna share with you guys though is this whole concept of launch campaigns. The term campaign is dying. It's dying, okay? And I'm like, I can't share all these, the campaign, but I can't share all the campaigns with you. But what I've been doing is I've been keeping track of a huge list and there's two kinds. First, there is a campaign that launches a product, I call them launch campaigns. The second is an evergreen campaign, and that's what keeps it in orbit. So one puts it up, one keeps it up, okay? One gets it out in the orbit, and one, uh, one, one keeps it out there, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna walk through a few of the things that actually get your funnel, your offer, all the noise and the attention it deserves in order to actually put it in orbit, okay? This is a big deal. This is actually, this is the second place. I said the offer, um, or the sales message is where marketers make their money. This is that second part. Okay, the campaign. And it's becoming a dying craft because people think a campaign is a Facebook ad. <laughs> not, okay? It's not a campaign. It could be part of one. It's not a campaign though, okay? And so I'm gonna go through just a few of these pieces here with you. Now, um, my first funnel that I ever built inside of ClickFunnels, actually it's the second one that I ever did. The first one I ever, uh, sorry, the second one I built, again, I was, I was in the army, I was in college, I was married, uh, we had kids, life was busy. And I was spending discretionary two, three hours a day that I was just eking out to go build my stuff. And it took me eight months. And I was like super into Russell's stuff already. And, um, and he, anyway, I, I went and I, I put all the pieces together and I built the funnel. And I was like, well, what should I sell in the funnel? So then I built the offer. And I was like, well, how do I sell the offer? And then I built a sales message. You guys know from this event, that is the opposite order to build anything, okay? First a sales message, then offer, then funnel. But I did it in that order. And then I went and I started launching and I started putting it out there. And for me, what it meant to launch, eight months go by and the data launch happens and there's all this writing on this. And I'm telling my wife, for real, you know, the better thing, I got it. Can you imagine if 1% of the 1%, I start doing that game, right? And, uh, and, and she's like, okay, cool. Like, let's just try like 15, you know, <laughs> let's see if it happens. And um, uh, I was getting close enough to the end of college to try and actually like really have to make it work or start applying for jobs. And so a lot's riding on this. This is the first time I launched Secret Emblem Hacks. And I went and I, eight months goes by and the day comes and I turn it on, whatever that meant, everything's already live. I created a Facebook page and I said, hey, I made a Facebook page, why don't you jump on there? And that was the extent of the launch of the funnel and nobody bought <laughs> and it was really painful and it wasn't until four months later i think it was about four months later my phone dinged Ding. like who the heck seven sending me 795 <sighs> it's a free plus shipping funnel what 795 from who i had forgotten i'd launched it it was such a painful experience i actually went backwards and i was like okay i'm gonna erase that from my memory okay then a little bit later like a few minutes later i was like Ding. Who just spent $97? Where was this money coming from? You know, like we're living on loans at that time. So I was like, D was this an accident? Like, do I need to send this back to somebody? It's a hundred dollars, oh my gosh, right? Our, our food budget between my wife and I for a month was 50 bucks, I think, or something like that. Um, I was like, what? Man, we're gonna go eat steak, you know? <laughs> right? I'll link. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then a few minutes later, Ding! Two nine, who sent me 297? I was like, that's crazy. And what I hadn't learned and what, what I kind of went on this journey to figure out was what things cause the cash from the marketplace. How many have built a funnel 
that has made no money, right? We've all done it. Okay, I wanna talk about this part of the framework. It's the horn, hey, <laughs> it's the horn. To do this, walk me through what Hollywood does to launch a movie. Like a year beforehand, what happens? You get a trailer. Usually what kind of trailer is it? It's a little teaser, but what does that mean though? Is it, it's short, right? Right, really short highlights. Sometimes it's just the name of the movie, like coming, like spring 2020, and that's it. You're like, oh, cool. That's the extent of their awareness campaign, right? What happens like six months before the movie goes out? Start tweeting about it, but talk shows. What? They start getting these actors coming out and they start priming the market. This is how Hollywood launches a product. Okay, and they start getting these actors to come out and go all the talk shows and they start getting people to come out and, and uh, um, you know, all the evening shows. What else happens? Let's say we're about three months till the actual movie comes out. Another teaser, but what is it usually? It's a little bit longer. Now we get a little bit more of the story. And they're like, whoa, how does it end? Open loop, open loop, open loop, right? They're like, I have to see that movie. And it's usually the same, usually the, the same preview. He broke all the rules, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this has to work. <laughs> Nothing can stop me now. You know, it's like the same, I actually went back and I, I started looking, I, I transcribed a ton of Hollywood previews, which is really fun. And I started looking, there's a similar pattern in every single one of them. They're saying the same thing. <laughs> Will he survive? I find out this spring, you know? And it's the same thing every time though, because the script that they know works and causes and evokes emotion. I gotta put that on my calendar, what, you know? They're trying to inspire action saying like, let's go do this. You know that most of the money, where do you think most of the money from the movie comes? First week, and then what? It's like nothing, right? You know, the movie it really doesn't make that much money after that. They make pretty much all their money like that first box office weekend. All right, and that's how they launch a movie. Um, that's how they launch a product. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna prime the market. I'm gonna let people know that it's coming. Okay, this is, this is very much what you should do with all your funnels. I'm gonna let people know it's coming. What products have I dropped out today that are not here yet that I've told you about now? Pursuit of profit, right? Pursuit of profit. How many of you guys have seen Impact Theory, that, that podcast? Super good, right, Impact Theory? That's the style of it. I'm gonna fly people in, we're gonna chat about what their profit models have been. Um, seed, <laughs> six month out preview, <laughs> okay? But that, that's it though. And that's one of the powers of, of you publishing is you control the audience, you control the distribution channel now. So what you're gonna go do is you're gonna prime the market. You're gonna let people know. You're gonna start putting in curiosity. I think it was Claude Hopkins that said that curiosity is one of the, is, is one of the most powerful human emotions or something like that. Specifically talks about curiosity being the biggest thing you can cause in somebody. That's why squeeze pages work. So I register some pages work. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to create um, a whole, this really cool campaign and I'm gonna start creating noise around it. Um, this book, uh, one, one just really fast thing here, um, which I totally agree with. Uh, you don't, just because, just because it's opening day, what, what are those knee-jerk reactions people make when they're launching something? The knee-jerk reaction is to discount the product. But I found that's usually because the entrepreneur is nervous, right? I, I've been there. Anyone been there here? I've totally been there. I was nervous to charge, had my own money beliefs to overcome. When you're launching this thing out, like don't, yeah, don't, I love that from that book. Don't diss your first product with a discount. Super powerful. Okay, a rich marketer doesn't get attention. They align with where people's attention already is. Okay, it's kind of like traffic. A rich marketer doesn't get traffic. Traffic is already there. I'm just gonna go step in front of it. Same thing with the way we launch products. The rich market doesn't get attention. It's funny because I'll talk to a lot of people like, oh, I'm gonna go get attention now. It's like, uh, you don't need to get it. Where is it already? It's very expensive to get attention. It's very expensive to change human behaviors. Instead, just align with where their behavior already is, right? Um, I put this post out. Anyone see me put this post out? We're no longer just in the information age. We're in the attention age where the loudest, not the best, is likely to get paid the most. Did anyone see that? Yeah. 
That was a controversial statement. <laughs> and there's a few people who are really, really mad at me about that. But it's true. How many of you know somebody who is worse than you getting paid more? Case in point, right? I was trying to tell uh, uh, this individual who's reaching out, slamming me about this statement. And I, I realized that, like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, need to, uh, I need to get better at making noise. Marketers are noise makers. They're orchestrated noise creators, okay? You have four major roles after the funnel is built, after the core offer is built, okay? The first role is to make noise. A marketing campaign, orchestrated noise. The second is to just kind of keep tweaking the offer, the message. Second money, meaning upsells, and acquisition funnels to get more leads. And then the fourth is build systems, and that's really it. Okay. And I want to I I tell you guys something here that's pretty powerful. Um, and I want you to, I don't want you to, I don't even want to get offended by this. <sighs> okay. Sales message plus offer plus funnel does not equal revenue. Ah, that equals poop. <laughs> Bless whoever created that emoji. <laughs> what equals revenue? Sales message plus offer plus funnel plus campaign equals revenue. The campaign is the way you put it out to the marketplace. It's what actually puts it and tosses it out there. Without that, that's why I built so many funnels personally, that made no money. Was the funnel bad? Not really. That's probably not it. Was the offer terrible? Most of the time when I've looked at your guys' offers, it's, the offer is not the issue. Right? Was the sales message bad? That's usually one of the biggest places I start to look first. It's usually the who in the market, though. Okay, but really, the real issue, though, is that no one knows about it. There's not enough of a campaign for people to go, oh, I could buy this thing. Uh, about, a, about a year ago, uh, somebody reached out and they said, Stephen, we love what you do, but no one knows what they can buy from you. I was like, ouch. <laughs> I should probably be more vocal on what it is that you could buy from me. Right? And um, um, anyway, so it's how you cause noise and push into the funnel. That's the campaign itself. Does that always need to be ads? No, no absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, in fact, ad dollars is probably the one that we spend the least time on. Um, for me, anyways, that's what I'm gonna walk through here with you guys. Um, oops, move forward, there we go. Uh, when a funnel is built, a rich marketer lives in front of the funnel. That's your zone. But most of the time when people's funnels don't work, where do they go focus on? The pages. And they go log into the pages and they start clicking things around. Most of the time it's that they don't have enough noise out there to generate the sale. Uh, one of my, um, one of my, most amazing marketing teachers ever from college. He truly was incredible. He was the CMO of Denny's. And uh, he also, of uh, Pizza Hut. He's the guy that invented stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> it's a crazy story, really cool. But uh, he, <laughs> humana humana, right? <laughs> that guy was awesome. And he was one of the first big mentors I ever had. And we had the semester in college where we did, had no classes, nothing else. All we did was create a business. And we had to make as much money, real money, from scratch with almost no help from the, the professor, the teacher, the whole semester. And like our grade was riding on this. And they gave us almost no help. And they said, hey, you, you're gonna be in the food space. And I was like, I can't cook. I can cook cereal. You know, like I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm serious? I can cook PBJs like a beast, <laughs> right? It's about it. <laughs> I'm not a cook. <laughs> so I was like, I was not stoked to be in there. And I was already like kind of entrepreneurial and everybody knew that who were my buddies. And so it was a group of 15 of us, and they voted me as the CEO of this food business. And I was like, no, dang it. And it was in front of all these teachers, so they knew. It's not like I could combat it. So we went to work. And for a while, the first little bit here, I mean, we, were, we eventually ended up making like three grand a week selling to college students empanadas. I didn't even know what empanada was, right? And... Uh, and the way we created it was by going out and asking people, well, what do you wish was in the cafeteria? And like, uh, we surveyed and surveyed and surveyed. Empanadas. Like, does anyone know what this is? I didn't know what it was. And someone was like, I think I have a grandma twice removed 
somewhere who's got a recipe. So it was like, so we, we went and we found this recipe and we made it. We're like, eh, it tastes all right. And we walked back out to the campus and we said, what kind of empanada would you want? And we surveyed the whole day, brought back all this data, put it in Excel, looked at our models, all this stuff. And we started looking at it, we're like, um, what we found from our market research that everybody wants um, authentic, like carne asada, true uh, like Mexican empanadas and pizza flavor. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I see what the semblance of, but not the real thing. Okay, sounds good. So we're like, we're gonna make carne asada empanadas and pizza empanadas. And we walk back out the next day and we're like, we're like, here's a, you know, what would you want with this? You know, it's an empanada, you like it? Cool, what do you expect to be eating with this? And they're like, um, you know what? I want a soda and chips. I'm like, what kind, <laughs> right? So then we went and, and created that, uh, that piece with it. And then we're like, well, what price point would you expect to pay for something like this? What logo do you like, right? What, uh, what color scheme do you like? That's what we thought a lot of marketing was. We did a lot of uh, group, um, um, has anyone ever done like a, focus yeah, there we go, focus groups. Are you guys on focus groups much, right? A little rough, not exactly amazing market research, right? A lot of guesswork sometimes inside those usually, right? Um, Usually, um, and uh, anyway, so they literally created our entire thing. And I remember at this time, I was the CEO of this thing, and the reason why I'm able to build my business structures now so well is because of that experience. Because at that time, every single decision was being run through me. There's 14 other guys that I was working with. They're like, Stephen, um, when we hand it to him, should we put it on this side of the plate or this side of the plate? I'm like, oh, I don't know, that side looks great. Uh, Steven over here, we have an issue with our uh, supply chain. Somebody over here says they can't get it in a certain time here or there. And I was like, uh, that, right? Uh, Steven here, look at this uh, design we made for our marketing thing, like, which was not marketing at the time, right? Um, anyway, every decision. So what I, what I had us do is we divided in, and I was like, stop everything, okay? I am the linchpin of our entire business. I'm the bottleneck of everything. Everything's running through me. It's like, you, you're in charge of supply chain. Choose five people. <laughs> I was like, you, you're in charge of finance. Track all the numbers. Tell us when we're like, going to run into a wall. Hey, you, you're in charge of marketing. Everyone else, talk to your people. They have authorization to run and decide on 80% of all decisions. The less of, uh, and then daily, I'll just have a five minute meeting with each of the heads. What do you think happened in my life? <sighs> so much better. And I started doing something very, very special. It was very, and I do it to my business now. We'd be in the busiest zones of the business day, right? The business day is become full-fledged. People buying all these empanadas. We're making three grand a week off these, you know, it's just fun. And um, what I would do is uh, back away. I would just go hide, <laughs> right? And I'd go back in a little bit and I'd hide. And like, there's a fire somewhere. I'm like, oh good, you know, back, back in. And I hid, I hid from my own business. And the reason is because I wanted to see if the system I had built could sustain without me. And I would watch to see where the breakdown was and I'd come up and I'd start creating these rules. I was like, hey, rule, when that happens, here. Precedence, there it is. There's our, there's our SOP, okay, keep it right there. Okay, over here, when that happens now, just do that. What happens now, do that. And then disappear again, <laughs> I wouldn't tell anybody. It was during the busiest times. And um, I had a conversation, that, there's a point with this, I'm not on a rabbit. <laughs> There's a conversation I had with uh, this marketing guy, CMO of Denny's, and it's about this. And we started making quite a chunk of change, quite a lot of money, especially to broke college students, selling empanadas. And uh, they, I was like, hey, I feel like our marketing campaigns, the teachers were never allowed to intervene. We had to come to them with questions, which means we had to get good at asking questions, which is why I always harp on everyone else about it. Okay. And so I had to go to them and say, hey, we have this specific scenario. Here's my specific question, because they wouldn't answer anything else. And, um, and I said, hey, this is my question. Hey, um, I'm like, we just did this huge marketing campaign. Again, in the general advertising world, it wasn't a real one. Um, and it, I feel like I'm yelling at people. Like, I'm like, empanadas, you know, like, I don't know how loud or how much loud I can get. Come get the empanadas. We have a new, like, fajita style one or whatever, right? It's totally fell apart. It's totally gross. Um, 
Gabe, but they, uh, the, I was like, I feel like I'm, I mean, it's probably in some cases I was actually yelling, you know? I don't know how much to get attention to the fact that we have these and people like them and we have a lot of repeat customers. We're doing the punch card things. We get repeats. It was great. And, um, and he said something to me that like has influenced how I do a lot of my funnel stuff. He said, you know what's interesting about marketing? He's like, the moment you feel like you are being insanely loud, like you're getting annoying. Funny enough, there's so many messages in this marketplace, that's just when they're starting to notice you exist. Ah. So we got louder, <laughs> way louder. Yeah, a little oink there on that one. <laughs> it's funny, it's a thing, it's awesome, <laughs> yay. And what I started getting into was realizing, how many of you guys know I was pretty loud about this event? Yeah. Every day, every day, a full month, where all I did is every episode of Sales Funnel Radio was about this, this, uh, about this event. Every day, posting the new ticket list of all the people who are coming in, what did that cause? Big social proof, right? Every day, right, see, watch what I'm doing in this and please model it <laughs> into your own business. Let me say steal it, we're model it, okay? Into your own business. Um, and it comes back to this piece though. Most of the time as us marketers, we kind of get lulled into this security where we're like, well, I'm gonna go start a Facebook campaign and I'm gonna go build my funnel and it's not working, so something's probably wrong with the funnel. The funnel doesn't start at the first page. The funnel starts at the campaign. The funnel is not the first page. The funnel's way ahead of that. That's just where, a funnel just captures cash. It doesn't create cash, okay? And so, because remember, it's a sales message and an offer. And that's just a method for me putting it online. And so what I need to get good at is understanding what causes the noise. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rifle through a few of these here because I got uh, nine minutes, sound good? Yeah. What is a marketing campaign from Google? Google says it is an organized course of action to promote uh, and sell a product or service. It's the actual mechanism to pull cash off the table, okay? A Facebook ad is not a campaign, okay? It's kind of like um, a seat is part of the car, but the seat is not the car, right? You can still use ads in there. Anyway, let's, let's move on here, okay? What most people do, uh, sorry, what do most people do when they actually launch today? All they do is they do an email, they do a social post, they create an Instagram story, maybe some Facebook ads, and um, that's about it. That's all they do to push that. And not, I'm not saying, I'm not like, like throwing rocks at that. Okay, but the issue is it's not really a campaign. I want a campaign. A campaign is a series of steps you've crafted. It's a series of events on the internet that you've crafted, online or offline, that creates pressure. Like Hollywood launching a video. Okay, I'm gonna create all this pocket of pressure here, pocket of pressure here, pocket of pressure here. It's all directed towards a single date, towards a single moment. Pressure, 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 pressure. Boom, okay? And what happens is for me, most of my cash from my funnels come from that, and it's what I use to pay my funnel teams. I don't actually make any money on my launches. What I do is I take that money and go pay off my funnel teams, pay off my campaign teams, pay off my scale teams, and I'm left with a killer asset. Now I make my money from evergreen campaigns. I don't make any money from launch campaigns. Dumps, I, I take that money from my launch campaigns and I dump it straight into my evergreen ones. Does that help? Yeah. That's a method of looking at how to build the funnel and get it out the door for free that has, I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons we launched so many funnels. I'm not building them, because I know that's not my role. I'm a marketer, not a funnel builder, okay? I don't know how to build a funnel, but that's not my role in my business, okay? Okay, the product that will not sell without advertising will not sell profitably with advertising it's a big sentence right there. If I can, if I, if the first place I go to drive an ad, or the first place I go is driving ads, and I don't even know if it sells without ads, it's gonna be a scary ad, okay? It's, again, one of the reasons I tell you all to publish so much. Create this distribution channel, own these publishing platforms, and then use it to launch your stuff into, and then take that cash, and that's the cash I go and I dump into ads. I've never put any of my own money in my businesses ever with that method, because I go in, does that help? Th that should like raise the bottom line quite a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so I go in and I, I do a launch campaign, and I'm gonna walk through several actual examples right here real quick, and I'm gonna do it kind of quick, okay? I take those launch campaigns though, and they're very specific 
series of events that cause pressure towards a certain date, which you all have seen me do, okay? And then what I do is once there's pressure, 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 and I do it through all these different ways, boom, that cash comes out. I take that money, the profit or the, uh, the, the revenue that came from there, I take that revenue, that's actually what I go pay off my funnel teams with. I still pay about 15 grand per funnel right now, personally. Usually it's 10 to 20 grand is usually what I spend at the range for every one of my funnels. Why? Because I'm not the one doing it. I bought back my time like Brad taught. I'm not the one doing it. Frankly, I'm not the best designer. I haven't written copy forever. I don't do my own sales videos. What I know is my role. And that's what I'm gonna teach you guys tomorrow is the three rich habits of, of, or three habits of rich marketers and actually teach you guys what those are so you guys can do them. Because the game's gotten really easy now. Now that I understand that, whoa, wait a second. My role is to stand in front of the funnel, not build the funnel. I'm gonna stand in front of it, cause pressure, and then the revenue that comes off it, pay off the teams and the leftover cash that comes from that. I go put that in my evergreen ads, things like Facebook, and I get paid from that, and I'm left with this amazing asset. It's why I don't have to go, but secret MLM hacks, it's the reason why it stays up there like that. We're gonna go rebuild it probably in the next uh, two months here. And you'll watch me do it. Okay, you'll watch me do it. You'll watch me go in, and I'm gonna craft it. And anyways, that's, I'm really stoked about tomorrow for that. Okay, a little oink. Oink, oink, oink. Mm. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, you need to create pressure and noise around the release date. Um, do you guys know Ray Higdon? Yes. Great guy, awesome guy, love the guy. He has like a $200 product. He's been selling it for, I don't know, two years, maybe three years. He just crossed $10 million with it. It's like a $200 product, how? He understands campaigns. Like the end of each month, he says, enrollment, it's about to open again for one week only. Okay, and he only opens the doors for that week or something like that, right? And then he closes the doors, close the doors. Always close the doors on your funnels, close it. No one takes action without scarcity and urgency. They're like the second secret weapon of marketers. Okay, so then he closes the doors and for those other three weeks, if you go to that page, ah, join the waiting list, we'll see if we can get you in, in the next enrollment period. And then he goes in and opens it back up. That open and close, open and close, it's one of my favorite evergreen strategies. Okay, now when I actually build a funnel, I don't, I used to just design the funnel. Now what I do is I actually design uh, the fulfillment at the same time. So if I had like a piece of paper, I'll draw the funnel. I actually do this in front of my team. And um, I, I draw it all out. And I actually draw the funnel in front of them on camera. Um, and then I go and uh, with a different color, make a specific video for each role in the funnel build. I'm like, hey, copywriting expert, Ashley, wherever you are. There you are. Hey, Ashley, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually what we're gonna be doing in this, uh, in this funnel right here on this first page. Uh, we're gonna be selling this book. It's free plus shipping. Here's the offer. And I want the story to be about X, Y, and Z, and I'll tell you the story. All right, and by the way, here's the email sequence I wanna give. On the second page, here is the, um, you're gonna get the video from Brandon, or Alex, wherever you are. Um, um, and uh, you'll see in there, most of the copy on that page can come from the video because I'm gonna spend a lot of time creating the sales letter for that, but I'm gonna do it on a video. So you'll actually have all the copy there. On this one, same thing. On the thank you page, we're actually gonna do a thank you page webinar. So if the copy, could you reinforce the fact that they just bought, but I also wanna encourage them to stick around so we can start their training now, which is really they're gonna watch the webinar. Chop the video, send it to her. Go to the next role, go to the next role. Get, that's my role in my business, okay? So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna design the funnel and fulfillment at the same time. I'm also gonna design my launch campaign, meaning how does it get out? An evergreen campaign, how does it stay out? Reason a lot of marketers get poor in this game, they stop being a marketer, but this is part of it. They don't design an evergreen campaign, meaning something that constantly is selling. My ads, they're not, they're usually not the thing that causes the most cash coming in, but it's enough cash weekly to just keep my doors open while I create other campaigns for these boom moments. Oof, a lot of cash, a lot of cash. You guys getting a lot of ahas from this? Yeah. This is like the skills that make the game, <laughs> okay? I want you to know, when we talk about squeeze pages, it's not what's gonna fill your pocket, it's this, okay? Um, there's no relationship between risk and reward. 
That is a huge fallacy. Um, meaning, oh, there's a lot of risk going on on this campaign. You could, they're actually not really related. 